What's up everybody, it's Izzy, and in this video I'm going to talk about a question that I got on Instagram today, and basically the question went something like this. Shouldn't you start with the least amount of volume that you can do in order to see results and then gradually build from there? And my answer to that is no, you shouldn't. Um, there's a whole wide range of volumes that can potentially work, right? So what he's talking about there is the minimum effective dose, right? The minimum effective dose of volume that you can see to actually see progress. Now, this in the real world can be really hard to measure, of course, because you know, what, what, how much progress we're we talking about in order to see one pound of progress. What's the time frame of progress? We're we talking about one pound of progress in 10 weeks. So the minimum effective dose for volume is something that's hard to pinpoint, but it is not the level that I would recommend that you train at for a variety of reasons. So a lot of people don't know this, but if you apply a certain stimulus, the magnitude of the stimulus determines the degree of the adaptation. So here's what I mean by that. If you were trying to get a suntan, if you spent 15 minutes in the sun, you'd get one level of darkness from that. If you spent 30 minutes in the sun though, you would get a different level of darkness from the same stimulus. It's just that the, the um, degree of that stimulus was greater in the second example. So of course you're going to get a greater adaptation response as well. Now, of course, this doesn't work on um, a linear scale. You can reach a point where if you're staying in the sun too long, you get burned. And the same thing happens with training volume, right? You can do too much training volume and begin to overreach and overtrain and go backwards. However, let's get back to kind of this point of should you do the minimum effective volume? Well, reason number one that you shouldn't do the minimum effective amount of volume, at least not for your entire training cycle, is that you can make faster gains by doing more. So just like there's a minimum effective volume and there's a maximum recoverable volume, there's an optimal amount of volume that produces the optimal rate of gains. And over a training cycle, you want to move from closer to that minimum effective volume to the maximal recoverable volume just to give yourself enough room to progress over your training cycle. But again, no, you don't want to constantly do the minimum effective dose of volume because you're going to make unnecessarily slow progress. Now, the second reason and the biggest reason that people make this argument or ask this question is because they believe or have been told that volume tolerance is a permanent adaptation or at least a very long lasting one. And I think this is just straight up false. It's not true at all. So let me explain to you what I mean. There's this idea that if you too early in your lifting career do a program like Smolov, sure, you might make great gains, but then your body is going to become adapted to that level of volume. And in order to make progress for the rest of your lifting career, you're going to have to do Smolov like programs. And basically, I can tell you that this is just flat out wrong. It, it's not true. It's not how it works. And if you have run Smolov and then made progress later on in your lifting career with programs that had less volume, leave a comment to prove what I'm saying. The reality is, is that volume sensitivity, volume tolerance is a quality that can be easily resensitized. You can easily resensitize yourself to volume with a single deload week in most cases. It really doesn't take more than that. Just because you ran Smolov one time doesn't mean that for the rest of your lifting career, you're never going to be able to make gains from anything but Smolov. It just doesn't work like that. And in fact, I'll go so far as to say this. For non-beginners, people who have been doing this for a few years under, you know, something resembling proper programming, proper nutrition, your volume tolerances don't change that much at all. Sure, you build from the beginning of a training cycle towards the end of a training cycle, but the minimum effective dose might move by a set or two every few years, okay? This is not something that changes a ton. You like anything with lifting, you get a rapid change when you first start. And from there, it's really slow sledding, right? Only big life changes can make it move a lot. Like say going from sleeping three hours a night to sleeping 10 hours a night, but overall it's not going to move that much. And so what this basically means is that over time, certain programs are pretty much always going to be too little volume for you. And certain programs might always be too much volume. Sure. You'll get a little better at tolerating volume throughout your career, but these numbers don't move very fast and they don't move very much. So again, let me summarize kind of the entire point of what I'm saying here. 
One, no, you should not do the minimum effective dose of volume throughout your entire training. The reason for that is because you're going to make unnecessarily slow gains. You can make faster gains by simply using a more optimal amount of volume. The second reason, volume tolerance is not a permanent adaptation. You can resensitize yourself to volume very easily by taking a break from lifting or a deload week with um, lighter volumes. So that is again to say you don't do small of once and then never be able to make gains on any lower volume program ever again. Just absolutely false. Third point that I want to make and last point in the video is that your volume tolerances don't change very much as a lifter. They move very slowly past the beginner stage and you can find that if you take notes, you'll be able to determine you know, the approximately the right amount of sets for you on the squat, the bench, and the deadlift. And from training cycle to training cycle, it's really not going to train that much. So a big part of individualizing a program is to find out what those numbers are for your squat, bench, and deadlift, that minimum effective dose, and then that maximal recoverable dose, and kind of move between those two points during a training cycle. And again, it does not change that much. So guys, that's my take on that. You should be training the optimal amount, not the minimum amount or the maximum amount. It's a number in between there somewhere. That's what's going to work best for you. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, my friends, have a nice day and good luck with your training. Peace.